whole body tracking is expensive, or at least some of it certainly is. Vive Ultimate trackers are close to $700 now. Most lighthouse trackers are like $400, not even including base stations, and stuff like Sony Mokopi somehow falls in between the two, despite being worse. If you're on a budget, a Slime VR-based tracker is your best option, at around $200 for five to six trackers, is what I would say if RiboCap didn't exist. For $200, you get not five, not 10, but 15 trackers. Some of you have probably already opened your wallets, but others are asking, what's wrong with them? Well, at first glance, it doesn't really seem like there's any compromises, although that definitely doesn't mean there aren't any. The trackers are very well built on top of being extremely small, or at least I thought they were extremely small until Slime VR decided to make me feel bad about myself. Jokes aside, they're still really tiny compared to other trackers. Before we get too far in, I'd like to make it very clear that RiboCap sent me this set of trackers for free, along with a set of their wide straps. I was also offered an affiliate membership, but I didn't end up taking that. So in the box, besides your trackers, you get the straps, which are pretty thin compared to most other options, the quick release plates for the straps, stickers to label your trackers, but there's actually labels built into the back of the trackers too, and then the charging cable, which doesn't fit the trackers. There's actually not even a charging port on them. And that would be because they also come with this awesome charging case. First of all, you can just charge all 15 trackers at the exact same time with one cable, which is incredible. But turning those 15 trackers on sounds like it could be annoying to have to do every time. Well, you can actually just press one button on the case and it turns them all on. It can also be used to turn them off if you want to do that too. The only thing I really don't like about the case is that it uses this barrel jack instead of USB-C, but like, whatever. And then lastly, inside of the case itself, you'll find the dongle which is used to connect all 15 trackers to your computer. I find RiboCap to be extremely comfortable. The straps they come with are super thin looking, but for me, they're pretty stable. I barely feel like I'm wearing them, and that combined with the smaller size of the trackers makes them really unobtrusive. They're great if you do a lot of stuff where you're getting on the trackers in a way, like laying down or kneeling, where normally if you had a bigger tracker it would be digging into you or just completely lose tracking. They also do have wide straps. I don't really know much about them since I haven't bothered to use them since the stock straps are just so good for me. Okay. So then what is wrong with these things? Because not everything about them can be perfect if they're this cheap. It's probably something with the specs. So let's take a look at their website. Looking through it, one of the bigger things that stands out to me is that they market themselves as proprietary. Now proprietary doesn't necessarily mean bad, but I certainly think bad when I see it, especially when their biggest competitor is free and open source. The real red flag on their site though is that they don't list an IMU model. If you're not aware, IMUs for trackers like these basically just determine how fast they drift. Now, I had a guess on what they were based on the specs that are listed. That being ICM 20948s, which generally is a pretty bad IMU. I actually asked RiboCap since I was really confused because I was getting better drift times than I would expect out of an IMU like that. Well, the answer is actually worse. They're using MPU 9250s, which in general are absolutely terrible. Somehow, RiboCap manages to make these work using great software. I'm actually extremely impressed with their software. Even putting performance aside, they just do a lot of things good. Don't know what a specific button or feature does, well, each panel has a question mark you can click that takes you right to their documentation. You can do things like change the RGB on your trackers or flash new firmware without having to use a separate flashing tool. Are you done for the day? Well, you can just press one button to turn all the trackers off in case you don't wanna put them all back into their case. How well do the trackers perform though? One thing to note is that you can only use 12 at a time for VR. That is kind of overkill though, since most social VR games only support 11 point tracking and three of those points are your headset and its controllers. 
Setting that aside, one of the first things I like to check with IMU trackers is how floaty they look. Slime VR set up well won't look floaty, and RiboCap doesn't either. It is worth mentioning that certain settings such as follow mode can cause RiboCap to look floaty, so bear that in mind. Well then how accurate are they otherwise? As with most IMU trackers, RiboCap uses a model of a skeleton, and in this case a model of your skeleton for tracking. They do send you a tape measure if you want to manually input the proportions of all your limbs, but I've found that the scaled height model works great. I'd say that RiboCap is actually comparable in accuracy to Slime VR. Don't take this as a test of latency, by the way, recording through pass through puts my headset through the ringer. So they aren't floatier than Slime VR, and they aren't less accurate than Slime VR. That just leaves drift in how it's handled, and this is where RiboCap falls behind. It gives you three operating modes though. First is six axis mode, and this is what most Slime VR compatible trackers run, but most of those are also running better IMUs. With it on, sitting completely still, you won't really drift that much, but as soon as I start moving my legs, in 47 seconds, I get the amount of drift that I would get in like 47 minutes on other trackers. Then you have the 9-axis mode, which enables the magnetometers. If you've seen my Unimotion video, you'd know I haven't had the greatest experience with those. They can be used to completely eliminate drift, except they get thrown off by so many things in your environment. Metal desks, PCs, bed springs, the nails in your goddamn walls. Not to mention, this is what happens if I bring a VR headset controller too close to a tracker with a magnetometer on. Safe to say, not a lot of people are going to be able to use this mode effectively. If those were the only two operating modes RiboCap had, then I would say it is absolutely not worth the money. Thankfully, there is the third operating mode, Anti-Magnetic Mode, and this is what impressed me the most. With it on, the magnetometers are also on. Except if they detect something weird, they'll just ignore it. I can actually move controllers near my trackers and they won't freak out. It is worth mentioning that if you're always going to be around something that puts off magnetic fields that mess it up, then this mode isn't exactly perfect. For example, if I sit near my desk for too long, my legs will kind of just get sucked towards it. And there isn't really much you can do about that. So if you have a really bad magnetic environment and you just can't get away from stuff that's causing interference, then this mode probably isn't going to save you. The drift in this mode is much less than 6-axis mode, but it's definitely still there. If I'm not moving around a ton, I'd say maybe like 30 minutes, but if you're doing some sort of high motion activity, even saying like 20 would be pretty damn generous. How do you reset drift? Slime VR lets you just double tap your chest tracker, and RiboCap has its own version of that. Except it doesn't trigger super reliably, so I usually end up having to go into the program and manually hit the button. In there, you can also choose to do a full reset, which depending on which one you choose, you have to hit either two to three different poses. There's also an auto reset function for if the trackers do something the software thinks is particularly egregious. It is not very pretty when it triggers, but it does get the job done. Depending on how I end up editing this video, you may even have noticed it once or twice by now. So is RiboCap worth it for you? That really depends. Like I said before, generally most Slime VR trackers are just going to outperform it. But when you're getting triple the trackers for the same price, that really isn't something you can complain about. It's also worth mentioning that Slime VR is able to be used in standalone with VRChat, and RiboCap does not have that feature. If you want the most trackers for your money and you're willing to put up with more drift, then RiboCap may be worth considering, with the condition that you're in an already decent magnetic environment that the anti-magnetic mode will be able to handle. If RiboCap ends up making a revision in the future with better IMUs, then it would probably be an instant recommendation from me. It is very impressive what they've been able to accomplish with bad hardware using really good software. Personally, RiboCap is the first IMU tracker that's actually given me a reason to put it on over anything else. Yes, it drifts more than stuff like Slime VR, and yes, it's less accurate than my Vive 3.0s, 
But with how small it is and how much more comfy it is, I'm willing to put up with the extra little bit of drift, even if it means sacrificing accuracy.